Welcome to another video by FP Builds. This is another RC build, hobby grade RC. And this is the build of the Komodo Dragon, the FE Komodo Dragon. Originally, I got one of the HSP Flying Fish and I just got it to try it out. And it's an entry level RC for drifting, but the, the shape of the body and all interested me at first and it's something I wanted to look at. So I actually got the RC and played around with it. Within about 10 minutes, I blew the motor and that set me on the course that you're gonna watch in this video where we upgraded it and we made it the Komodo Dragon. So in this video, you're gonna watch the transition of the HSP Flying Fish to become the FE Builds Komodo Dragon. Enjoy. We've got another RC build over here and uh, I'm so excited. Uh, there's one reason in particular I got this car. It is a drift car, I believe. And uh, I'll just turn the box around so that we can see what it says. High performance, one in 10 scale racing car, ready to run. And um, I like the shape, it actually doesn't look like that. It looks totally different from that. I like the shape of the car and uh, I thought it would be good for the models that I keep. Of course, you know, I've done uh, a Traxxas rally build and um, it has been amazing. And that is one of my prized possessions. I don't actually even scratch the car. When I drive it, I drive it very gently. But uh, this is this might become one of those cars if I like the body, if I like the way it looks. But let's quickly do an unboxing and then we'll test it out as it's standard. And then we'll do our FE builds mods on it and see how it becomes. Okay, so the box is open. See, it comes with uh, the parts manual. And it comes with the uh, remote control that I don't really like. Already I can see that comes with some stickers. Okay, it's the Flying Fish, HSP Flying Fish. It enjoys a level of design, high speed. Okay, Flying Fish, awesome, ready to run. And I've got some more stickers that I actually found um, that I might use on the car. Um, this is a MSI sticker. I'm sure for those of you into computers recognize that. And this too, yeah. I think this is something else, power supply or something, but they're nice stickers. So we've got that. We've got the light kit and everything. We're not obviously gonna stick this on when we're doing the benchmark test, but let's see how this car looks. In terms of looks, it's very much like the Tamiya. Um, I was hoping it was going to be a bit more than this, but it uh, feels a bit heavy. Let's see what's in there. So we're just going to do a quick unboxing of the whole box. Let's see what's in the box and then I'm going to move this aside, set the phone down onto a, a mount and then look at what's in there. Okay, there's a charger. So we see this comes with some sort of battery. And there's the remote control. And it seems to be cable tied down. So let's just lift this box and see if there's anything else under it. Very difficult to do this with one hand. Okay, so it's been unpacked already. Um, it's a plastic there that's open. I assume they tested it before they gave it to me. Okay, so let's set all these things aside, including the remote control, because I don't really like that. I'm going to test with it, but let's just see how this chassis is. Um, I like the tail, the wing. Feels a bit quality, but yeah, let's see what's under this body. Hmm. This looks interesting. Okay, so we already see there's a battery. It comes with a battery. Um, there's a brushed motor. The transmitter is visible over here. Seems to have a metal drive shaft in the middle. 
that's quite good. It's got this reinforcement valve here. Hmm, this is quite interesting. Some nice metal shocks. Very nice, actually the dampening on them is very nice. I like that. And at the back. And it's obviously a drifter, it comes with drifting wheels, but uh, let's just go test it out as it is. Put some batteries in the remote, hopefully this is charged up, and let's see how it performs. This was the era of the Group B Rally Supercar. For the driver, the mere task of keeping the kicking, bucking, roaring machine under control often seemed enough. World Rally spectators in Europe exhibit inexplicable bravado by standing only a few feet from the rally course. period I think it's been like 10 minutes and I've blown the motor first things first let's just take this out and get rid of this nonsense yeah nah, let's go in let's go in the bin that's already blown. That's also coming out. I might keep this HSP remote because I don't have a spare one to use right now. The servo can stay in there, um, depending on what it is and uh, it's gearing. The 6kg servo. Can't really make out if it's all metal gear, but yeah. We might just need to change out a few things. The shocks are really good. I like that. It's got some nice compression and rebound. You can tell that they're the oil filled shocks. So that's quite nice. Um, very similar to a Tamiya chassis, although this one has some slots that can actually breathe. I believe I've seen a Tamiya chassis that has something similar. Uh, it's almost like the upgrade back of the standard TTO2 or maybe the TTO1. Um, I wonder if this ESC is a hobby wing or it's something else. Yeah, it is a 1040. I'm sure you can see that over there. It is a 1040 and uh, we're going to take that out. We might also just change that silver out as well since we're opening up this system and uh, yeah let's see what we can do hopefully we can bring something really good out of this I wonder what glue they used to actually stick this uh, ESC down uh, but it was strong enough that it actually broke one of my my tools so I'm very I'm, I'm very impressed with that I'm, I'm impressed with that uh, whatever glue this was was some was some good stuff it was some really good stuff that good can trust your life with glue like that.
Okay, so at this point we've got a working setup and right now as you can see I've actually logged into the module through the wireless connector, uh, the wireless programming card for Hobbywing and I'm doing the settings. The one thing you'll notice is I changed the counterclockwise to clockwise and that was the wrong setting over there and I had to change it again. So if you want to do something similar, just know that setting needs to be on counterclockwise. And you'll notice I put the drag brake on about 10% um, to sort of give a bit of a, a, a braking effect when you let off the throttle. But um, on the punch level, I actually set it to number two only because that motor is quite big. It's quite overpowered for that car. And I didn't want to break any of the gears. So you would notice over there. And here I'm just basically renaming it to the HSP FE builds. Okay, so here is the system after FE builds has worked in it. Yes, there's a lot of wires that need to be tucked down, but uh, we've made sure that we've kept all the intricate details out of the way. Uh, we've put some nice shiny rims. Um, it's a bit more grippy, and uh, they are bigger than the actual rims that were there at first. So from that motor over there, which we blew off in a few minutes. Um, yeah, I see something's burnt in there. You can actually see the wires are burnt. And we've gone to this brushless system that is super, 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 super fast that I'm actually scared to test it. So let's uh, hope this goes well.
all-wheel drive, as you can see. And uh, my battery is flat on my remote, as you can see. This is a real drift car, and uh, this is our build. This is what we as FE Builds have done, and as you can see, it's not too shabby. As she tries.